San Diego photojournalist Susan Madden Langford spent 18 months in San Diego Juvenile Hall getting to know the kids who many people think are beyond repair. She came out of the experience with the belief that one good enough someone can make a huge difference in their lives. She's here to talk about the book of photographs and personal essays she published. Born Not Raised, Voices from Juvenile Hall tells the often heartbreaking stories of children who have been failed by their families and by the system. Susan, thanks for being here. I want to start off with good enough someone. What does that mean? Well, I did work with Dr. Diane Campbell following the year and a half that Polly, my daughter, and I were in the hall doing our interviews. I worked with Diane and we created the timeline for the book and at the same time she showed me places where the children are very, very vulnerable. They haven't had the bedrock, the good stuff of early childhood development. But she said if you have a good enough someone through the educational system, through an aunt, an uncle, brother, sister, anyone who can step in if you're suffering from horrific alienation, abuse, neglect, that type of thing, that can carry you through. The timeline, now the timeline is the beginning of the book. Tell me more about that. That's correct. The timeline is to show that from birth to the age of 20, the various developmental things that take place with kids. And you don't even realize from zero to two the importance of what's going on with, with the young kid. And what can take place at the age of two, if tantrums are not worked out and they are carried forward to the age of five, then you have a youth that is entering into the school grade and very disruptive. And all of a sudden someone says, oh, he's got ADHD. What it really is, is it's behavior that was missed when he was two to three. Now, we want to show the people at home some of these photos um, and then let us know explain them for us because they're not just your regular photos there are other meanings and reasons as to why we're, we're seeing what we're seeing so let's let's start with the first one now and tell us what we're seeing we're seeing one of the cells that's at the Kearney Mesa facility and there's nobody in this this picture how come confidentiality we weren't permitted to take cameras in so I created photographs and I took the photographs into the hall and I asked the kids to write what does this mean to you how do you feel in some cases, as we're seeing right now, where one kid is showing that guns and, and anger and, and horrific um, violence that takes place in the streets. So this is a crip who's shooting a blood. So it's gang, gang behavior, and he just popped that one out drawing. So we've got the next one up now. What are we seeing? This was actually taken. We did not take this. this well, we took the image, but it wasn't until we did our documentary film. It's more expensive to do nothing. And we went back into the hall. At that time, we were permitted to go ahead and to bring video work as well as, as do stills. So these are the kids at their exercise time out in the yard. And the next one? This was a special drawing that was done by a, a gal we call Sands um, in the book. She um, had actually played Russian roulette with her mother's head. So she was incarcerated, and it was going to be for a good period of time, supposedly. Um, she had acting out problems. Uh, she was in our girls' uh, rehab facility meeting sessions that we had with 8 to 12 girls, and she actually had a very, very powerful personality. She, when she was removed and sent back home, um, and we'd been there long enough that we experienced that, we were able to go to her home. She was miserable at home. She reoffended to go back to the facility because the facility was becoming her family. And this picture that she drew, a teardrop falling from an eye. It was a lot of sadness in, in her life and, and a lot of neglect, a lot of abuse. Her mother was basically acting as a teenager with her. And it was, it was hard for, for Sands. And she, she loved the relationship that she had with Polly and with me and with the other girls. So that became more comfortable because there was some learning. They, these, a lot of these kids are very teachable. When you get a picture like that, when you ask a girl to draw something and you get that, how does that make you feel? Lost. Um, one of the reasons why we wanted to do this book, we want people to see who these kids are. We want them to understand the trauma that they have sustained in their lives. Plus the fact that I had visited with a lot of their mothers and I had in my book, May is My Sweet Potatoes, Women Doing Time. A lot of these kids are products of the women who were incarcerated in the local jail. Yeah. What do you want people to know? What do you want them to take away when they, when they see your book from this project? These kids can be saved. Not all of them. There are 8% of these kids that are not as salvageable. They are serious felons. There are serious felons that are coming down from DJJ very soon, too. And those are kids that really are going to be locked away for the rest of their life. But we are right now creating another pipeline for prison. And we can't afford it. We can afford to help these kids and to be volunteers and be active and take on some of these kids. Find that sparkle in them 
give them a little something positive, not have them oppressed with this alienation and, and with the hardship that they have. They've lost the ability to have any confidence in school, so they're truant. They're on drugs. They're living the same life that they've seen their parents live. Susan Madden Langford, thank you for being here. Do you have a website or a place people can go to find out more about your book and this absolutely, project? Absolutely, absolutely. It's going to be in Barnes & Noble, this particular book. It's on Amazon.com. It's on BarnesandNoble.com presently. Um, I'll be at Warwick's on April 21st doing book signing. And my website is HumaneExposures.com. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you.